Now I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about the uh, GFX 100 Mark II. So we tested the camera in a variety of situations. Yes, Obviously we tested right. it at the beginning of this video in 8K, shooting that with Joe at the Triumph showroom and we did some uh, burst mode shooting to try to do for auto focusing tracking. Yeah, Bobby like on a sexy Triumph bike. Yes, indeed. Yes. yes, I was playing model for that. And yes. then after that, we went to do some macro shots of a Grand Seiko watch, absolutely beautiful watch. I love that actually. And then right. after that, we did some architectural with the tilt shift lenses. Correct. Yeah. So let's talk about the camera a little bit. I mean, obviously we, when we were doing this review, we've been using this pre-production firmware. Mm -hmm. It's been updated a couple of times since we've uh, actually had the cameras in our hands. What's been your experience with the GFX this far? I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, the you have to say that though, he's a Fujifilm ambassador, by the way. I'm biased as always. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because the autofocus is better. It's improved over the predecessor and also GFX 100S. Right. I like to compare it with the GFX 100S because of the size. I mean, I think that's where I think Fujifilm realized they hit the sweet spot with the 100S versus the 100. Correct. And I yep. think obviously that's technology, that's innovation, that they realize they can actually put a lot more in a smaller body. And then now we have sort of the culmination of both of both. those. That's right. The build quality is also another level up. I mean, the texture of the leather red, I think it feels very nice. Very nice, very yeah. premium, very good grip, especially in a humid climate like we're in Singapore. The vertical grip and the cooling fan. Okay, it's the same cooling fan as the X-H2S and X-H2. But it's smart that they actually made it so it actually fits. All the cameras, true. Yeah. That's important, I feel. It's a brilliant idea, not fixed, like a GFX 100. Two more batteries. I guess you can shoot, uh, you can bring three batteries for a holiday and that's all you need. You know what, I tried it briefly when I had it and- the How do you like the buttons? The buttons are really good. I gotta tell you something right now. If you tried the GFX 100 or the 100S or even the 50S Mark II, the 50, right. the buttons, the design, the, the way that they click is so much better on this. The grip is fantastic. It is, Worlds above the 100. Really is a nice grip to use. Image quality, mm. I was told that the dynamic range is a lot better. There is a good improvement. IBIS, yes, improves. Much more stable, right? Stops. Eight stop. Yeah, there's a lot of improvements inside this camera, which do, does make it a very interesting system, especially now with the 9.44 million dot EVF, which oh, we talked about. That's gorgeous EVF. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't tried with the Sony A7R5 or the Alpha One, and you've never tried a 9.44 million dot EVF, it is. It's like looking out right now is what we see. It true, is true. beautiful. Also, you can put you know boost mode on into it as well, higher frame rates and all that kind of stuff to help mm, out. Yeah. But they say there's a new sensor in this, but I, I'm like you, when I was taking photos with this, I don't necessarily notice a big difference from yes, yes. the 100S or the 100. Yeah. It is 16 bit color, et cetera, et cetera. But I never tried in night scene at this point though. I tried night. We only can shoot JPEG by the way, because bras are not true, available yet. Right. And I did find that um, low light performance was relatively good for what it is. Do you see the improvement? Hard to say, man, because you know, it's it's about the lenses too. You know, when you're using a fast aperture lens, I was using the 45 2.8 okay. and the 110 f2. Both are relatively fast lenses for medium format and they both perform great with it. Maybe the, the new sensor more in technology, maybe it's a little bit more faster with the autofocusing in terms of the phase detect system inside of it. Do you struggle in low light? Oh, can you feel the improvement? You can feel the improvement. It's not a huge improvement. Mm. But again, we're using pre-production firmware. Right. So we can't completely justify and say this is a full review because this is a kind of a first impression. Subject detection is great. I mean, you got animals and cars. Uh, yeah, and I tried that. Yeah, it works perfectly fine. I was just stick on like glue. And of course, depending on the lens that you use as well, that's going to be a different net factor. The LM lens definitely a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah, compared to the non-LM. I was just talking to Bobby earlier. I'm just saying that the new GFX 100 Mark II, yeah. if you are into medium format, I think this is the best time. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Because now I think medium format's matured. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. It's always been there, but there's always been compromises you had to make when you got a camera system like this. Yeah, you love the image quality, but the focusing is a, a bit slow. Right. Uh, um, it's big, it's heavy. Of course, it's still not light. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you want to use it for video, I mean, obviously the GFX 100 100S, you could, mm. but it, and the video is decent out of it. If you're just doing talking head like this, it's right, fine. Right. But if you want to track or do things like that, it was a little bit of a challenge. But now with the new processors inside of this and the new autofocusing system, it's a lot better. I have not tried the video. Mm. Probably you can explain, but you tried quite a fair bit of it. I right? tried a fair bit of it. And um, I mean, obviously there's a sample in this video as well where you're going to see this right now. You'll see in terms of the tracking, how it looks. And it's good. Is it going to be as fast as a full frame system we're going to see from... Sony, for example, yeah. or even like the Fujifilm, the XHS2 right. or 2S for this. Yeah. It's not going to be like that. Right. But it's better than the 100S. 
And I think that's a big improvement. And of course, we're using pre-production firmware, so we do have to say that it probably, by the time it goes to market, it's going to be even better and the Fujifilm's going to be updating this. I'm just curious. I mean, for a still photography, this camera is amazing to me. It has matured like what you mentioned. Oh, yeah. What is going to use it for video? What people in the industry would like to consider this as an alternative? Yeah, this is a good question, man. I was actually thinking of this myself because, you know, there's so many video features inside of this now. Right. I mean, for the, the fact that you can, you know, choose your lens from GF lenses to, uh, was it Primista lenses mm, yeah. to 35 millimeter lenses, and it will, you know, adapt accordingly to obviously AK with a 1.44 crop. I, it's a good question because there's more features inside of this, but would, would someone that's into video buy the GFX 100 Mark II for video primarily? Yeah. Or would okay. it be still a still photographer's camera that does video? I mean, I think this is a gamble that Fujifilm's taking with this to say, okay, we're going to push as much video as we can into this and see what, what the market holds. Now, maybe they know something we don't mm -hmm. in terms of analytics or in terms of market share, in terms of what customers want. Right. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below, but I'm a little bit on the fence of it. I mean, not to say that it's a bad thing, just how will the audience, how will the, the customers take to it? it. Yeah. What's up, guys? I'm just jumping in on this video to give you some updates because we received some firmware updates on the GFX 100 Mark II since the time of this recording. And I thought it'd be good to touch base on some of the new features added and also talk about this new film simulation, Reala Ace or Reala Ace, however you want to say it, Tomato Tomato. This was an older film stock that Fujifilm made back in the day, which was to reproduce color accuracy. That was what that film stock was all about. It was meant for professional photography or anybody who wanted really good color accuracy. And now Fujifilm has brought it into the GFX 100 Mark II. Now, I do not know at the time of this recording if it's going to go to the X-T5 or any other camera system out there or the X-H2, X-H2S for that matter. I have no idea, but I am actually recording in it right now, 4K 25P with the Reala Ace film simulation to give you an idea how it looks on the skin tone. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the standard profile or the standard simulation, then I'll come back to Reala Ace and you guys can let me know which one you prefer. So now we're using the standard simulation. This is what I was always using when I was recording video if I was not gonna be shooting an F-Log. By the way, you can shoot an F-Log 2 now for the GFX 100 Mark II up to 14 plus stops of dynamic range, which is really, really impressive. But now looking at my side monitor here, what I can tell you is just based on what I'm seeing is that there's a little bit more reddish tone to my skin, a little bit more magenta to my skin versus the Reala Ace, which had more of a warmer tone to reduce the redness and it added a bit more of that uh, orange kind of yellowish tint to the skin, which is a little bit more realistic to my skin tone personally, but I'd love to hear from you guys, what do you think? Because a lot of people out there, especially professional photographers, when they were editing some of the GFX files for skin tones, they always found it to be a little bit challenging at times. Maybe this Real Ace will solve that uh, problem for them or not. Love to hear from you guys. Anyway, let's go back to Real Ace and let's continue on with the video. All right, so besides the Real Ace film simulation here, let's talk about some of the other added features inside of this camera. We have what's called a variable shutter or a flicker reduction shutter setting in this. You've seen this in other cameras already. So let's say you're gonna be doing photography in a stadium or a concert and you got those LED lights that are flickering and you don't wanna get that banding. Well, now you can fine tune the shutter to reduce that banding, you can do this in video and also in photography as well. So this is a feature that I've been wanting in the camera system for quite some time because even back here behind me, this cabinet system, it does flicker and this will reduce that. So I'm very, very happy with this and I haven't tried it much with photography yet, but I hope to in the near future. Also, we have ISO 80 as the standard sensitivity for your ISO before I believe it was around 100 plus or 100 on the GFX 100 and 100S. Now it's down to 80. SSD recording via USB-C. That's very, very cool because look, you can tell that Fujifilm is very serious about cinematography with this 100 Mark II. You're seeing, I mean, I mean, so many different settings in, the, in this, as I mentioned in the video, from setting your lenses to GF, Promista, 35 millimeter, anamorphic. You can also do get a simulation of the anamorphic to squeeze inside the camera as you're recording, which is great. They're adding so many features of this. You have waveform, focus map function. There's so many features cinematographers and videographers have been wanting that are now in a medium format camera system, which is quite exciting. So that's another one. Also touch uh, tracking for autofocus in movie mode. This is what a lot of people have been wanting as well. Instead of using the joystick or having to manually do it, now you can just touch on the screen. It can just rack focus 
and that makes life a lot easier. And that's pretty much about it, guys. I mean, there's gonna be more features, of course, which we'll talk about in our full review. Again, we've been using a pre-production camera, but these are some of the highlighted features in the GFX 100 Mark II. Now let's go back to the video. But let's talk about some of these new lenses as well, because we've got the 55 1.7, right? We've been yes. talking about that one. Right. It's a larger lens. It is, but it's an interesting focal length, I felt. It's quite versatile to me because I love the 45 1.8. I think that's a great lens. But right now, this is 55, a bit tighter, but it's 1.7. So if you're gonna shoot some documentary portrait, stunning. The depth of field is just gorgeous. The fall off, how it just, your subject is sharp, not overly sharp, Mm. But there's a natural organic look to the image. True, true. And the fall off is gorgeous. It's actually fighting the 110. It yeah, is yeah. in a lot of ways. It really is. And you know, and but for video, I think this lens is gonna really shine, especially because of that focal length. Never thought about, about that though. It's about 40, 45 millimeter. No, 40.5, I think. 40.5, 40 right? Yes, for yeah. a full frame. Which is a good all-around focal length for video in a way. But yeah. the size of it is the one thing, just the one thing on it, you know? You can't have it all. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's a larger lens, so that's something like if you were used to the 81.7, which I think is the closest comparison to it, right? Yes. But then we also got the new tilt shift lenses. Oh, that's interesting. I, I think many people have been waiting for that professionally, or that people who does landscape. One stage, I actually bought a Lauer lens, actually. Yeah, that's I remember a shift that. Lens. Uh, but that was a full frame lens adapted to the GFX. Yeah. So to be fair to Lawa, it wasn't really designed for the GFX system or to maximize Correct. Correct. 100 megapixels. It's the best I could do. But we tried using the GF30. I love that lens. It's a full fledged tilt shift lens. That yeah. is a really good focal length for a lot of tilt shift people. I think it's about 24. About 24, right? Yeah. The aperture is yeah. 5.6 on that. Yeah. And then it's a well-built lens. It's a big lens though. It is big. It's big, it's heavy, but it's worth every ounce of it if yeah. you're doing architectural. Were there any hiccups using the lens? I was just trying to figure out how it works. After maybe five minutes, yeah. you roughly know how to tilt, how to shift, how to rotate it yeah. to your advantage. Um, that's about it. It's made out of solid metal, right? It's a metal it is, lens. It is, it is. So if you're looking for a very lightweight tilt shift lens, this is not it. <laughs> this is a beast. And then speaking of a beast, we got to talk about the... Uh, 110. Yes. That's a bigger beast. Tilt shift macro lens. Lens, yeah. So that's where we try shooting with the uh, Seiko. Yeah, the Grand, Grand Seiko. Seiko. That's right. As a matter of fact, I got to talk about this watch for a second. Big thanks to Grand Seiko as well in Singapore who allowed us to actually take this watch out because this was really, really impressive. Yeah, did you get any security to... I signed my life away pretty much. <laughs> it's called the Lake Sua or Lake Shua if I may say so. And it's named after the lake near one of the Grand Seiko factories, I believe. Five day power reserve, accuracy within 10 seconds per month, spring drive movement with Zaratsu polishing. Now, is how high polished it was when we were shooting it because that was the hardest thing for us is to capture sort of like block all the reflections yes even on the dial because the indexes were so shiny i it mean is. we had a hard time right with the help of eugene from <laughs> broncola we took about probably an hour 15 minutes set the camera on a timer and duck because our reflections were being captured in the indexes. That's how shiny this watch is. But it's it, all worth it when you see the final picture. It, it is beautiful. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Can we get a lot of discount for it? I, I'll check. Thank I'll you check. very much. I mean, because obviously Fuji from Jap Japanese, maybe there's something there. I don't know. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But it's a gorgeous dial. It was really, it, it tested the prowess of the lens and the lens is very sharp. It is, it is. It's, uh, but you got to take time to focus on it. You have to be very careful, keep shooting, adjust the tilt and shift to the final part where you think this is the space that you need it to be. It's just sort of understanding how to maximize the tilt shift. I'm still learning. Yes, me too. <laughs> we were trying this because obviously tilt shift we've used for architecture. Yes, correct. In, in landscape, but when you use it for product, it's a very different medium. And I'm sure all of you, some of you guys out there that do use a tilt shift for products will probably know a lot better than us, but we did try our best. And obviously we got the watch, but we stopped down and got some really good shots with it. Yeah, right? we stopped down quite a bit. Yeah, There's a little bit of focus yeah, stacking yeah. as well. And then I guess we come down to the our final thoughts on this. What do you think price point wise? 7,499 USD. I'm biased. But I think this is the best time because this camera is mature to a point where I felt that it's able to do most of the stuff. The question a lot of people are going to have, especially because the Hasselblad X2D is in the market, and there's always been comparisons to those two cameras. Why? Well, I mean, yeah. both medium format camera systems, obviously, in Fujifilm and Hasselblad have had a relationship in the past for quite some time. Yes, correct. And obviously, these are the two, pretty much the only two prosumer medium format uh, mm -hmm. systems in the marketplace. Right. Phase one is, I think, in a different league altogether. Yeah, yeah it's up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way up there. Yeah. Having used both, I can appreciate both, but I think we had to talk about this. They're two different camera systems. Correct, right. yeah. The Hasselblad is designed just to be for best image quality, the color science. There's no video whatsoever. It's a slower autofocusing system, single point. Uh, it's phase detect, but it's 
a single auto focus, not like continuous auto focus. But it's smaller. It it's is lighter. smaller. It, that's the benefit of the, the X2D system, I would say, over the GFX mm. if you're looking for that. However, with the new uh, technology implemented into the GFX 100 Mark II, this is really competing with full frame more so than ever before. I agree with you. But you know what? The tracking and the, the burst modes on this eight frames per second or five frames per second. Yeah. And you got you got subject tracking. Yeah. Actually, it's a lot better than it was before. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's a great improvement. And I got to say hats off to Fujifilm for actually, when you think about how fast they redesigned the system. A brand new model. Actually. Yeah, it's a brand, brand new, new model. design. Actually. Yeah. This is not a kind of a rehouse 100S. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's a brand new body. Yeah. It looks like it at least. The EVF. Yeah. Removable too, right? Yes. Yeah. Great for video. If you want to put on a gimbal, it's, it's great that way. The engineering and the, how fast they've been able to do this. Yeah. And especially during COVID, because obviously this has been in development for quite some time. Correct. Hats off to Fujifilm, man. You guys have really done a great job with this camera system. And we will be back with a more in-depth review. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. Also follow Ivan as well. Fuji fanboys? Yes. What's your personal one as well? I've been Josh. Josh Rolo. Rolo. That's yeah. right. And also, we've got the photo contest going on right now. Yep. We are yep. still um, judging. Yes. Slowly but surely, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So take a look out for that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you can. Like this video. Helps us out a lot. Take care. Stay safe. And we will chat to you soon.